Hi, Lester, wish you engineer here. I'm very excited today to bring you a very interesting topic that's been on, playing on my mind for a number of years, but um, I've never had the time or the resources to, uh, to investigate it. Uh, now, uh, thanks, to, um, thanks to the equipment and, uh, and the tests that we have developed for um, our martial arts research and testing laboratory, I can finally look at answering the age-old question, can a martial artist dodge a bullet? Now, uh, just as a, a bit of a spoiler, and, uh, and, and, and unfortunately, some of you may be disappointed, I'm not going to try and dodge a real bullet. I'm not uh, going to try to win the Darwin Award today. But uh, um, what I have done is I've set up uh, an experimental uh, procedure and some equipment to see uh, what it would take to, or what, where, where the, uh, what kind of range we're talking about um, w w within which it is possible to dodge, physically dodge a bullet. Now, of course, um, I'm going to perhaps spoil the outcome by stating right in the beginning that uh, I don't believe that it is possible to dodge a bullet, but maybe not for the reasons that you might assume. I don't believe that it has anything to do with uh, reaction or response times. Um, in, in fact, that's precisely what this uh, experiment is going to be about, to calculate what kind of reaction and response times um, you would need to dodge a bullet within a particular range. And um, what, uh, I'll, I'll explain later, uh, during the conclusion part of this video, uh, why I believe that it is impossible to dodge a bullet. Um, what I'm going to do, um, first of all, is just to briefly give an overview, um, and, then, and then we'll have a look at, uh, at the method that I'm going to use, um, and then uh, we'll look at the actual equipment that I've constructed. Uh, it looks a bit agricultural, but it's going to do the job. Um, and, uh, and then we'll go into the actual experiment and look at the results and look at the conclusion. So I'm, I'm quite excited to do it, a um, little bit, actually a little bit um, apprehensive, because I have not yet done the experiments, I don't know what the outcomes are going to be. Uh, so uh, let's get to it. And of course, for the next section, uh, the section on um, uh, explaining the methodology, I might have to uh, don my very special uh, lab coat and uh, special safety goggles because lasers are involved um, specifically for this experiment. So I'll see you in the methodology section. Welcome to the methodology section. As you can see, I've got my very special lab coat on and very special safety goggles. Um, essential equipment for dodging bullets. But perhaps I'm just not the one to wear this, right? It? The one? So, uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is, well, I, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, I'm going to be standing over here. Um, on one side, of the school, I've mounted a laser, which is essentially going to be permanently on. I'm going to be breaking the beam, so the beam is, the beam of the laser is essentially going to mimic the uh, trajectory of an incoming projectile. I'm not allowing for such things as, uh, um, uh, you know, acceleration due to gravity, etc., etc., for projectiles, because the the short ranges over which we're testing this, it doesn't, it's not going to make too much of a difference. Um, so the way that this is going to be set up is uh, the, the timing is going to be done by a, a, a high precision uh, timer, uh, essentially a, a typical laboratory timer. Um, I've got a uh, double, uh, essentially a series of double pole switches. Um, I built it into a gun because you know why not. Um, and uh, one of the poles will be switching a visual indicator, which is essentially just a little LED light that uh, lights up when I, when, uh, to let me know that the gun has fired. Um, at the same time, as uh, exactly the same time that the visual indicator light comes on, the, uh, the activator will also start the timer. So that high precision timer will time how long it takes for me to, first of all, see the uh, visual indicator light, um, kick my uh, slow brain into gear, dodge out of the way, and allow the laser to continue 
to complete this optical circuit and, uh, and, and uh, be detected by a little photo detector um, circuit that I've, I've put on the other side of the, of the school. When the photo detector detects the uh, laser beam, then it will switch the high precision timer off. And that time will essentially be how long it takes for me to get out of the path of an incoming uh, bullet. Now, um, because we're talking about such uh, short ranges, um, and, and using a fairly typical m uh, uh, velocity for a 9mm uh, round of about 350 meters per second, we can essentially draw a straight line graph um, uh, with uh, 350 meters per second, um, uh, obviously over one second. And uh, from the time that uh, we, we measure, we can extrapolate how far away from the the, the the shooter I have to be in order to dodge that incoming projectile. So I'll meet you again in uh, the equipment equipment section where I'm just going to show you what the equipment looks like. As I said, don't be don't expect too much. Uh, it's a bit agricultural, but it will do the job. Welcome to the equipment section of the video. Um, on this side of the school, uh, we have. Uh, my uh, speed and precision uh, station, uh, which is uh, under Mark 1 at the moment. There's still a few things that I want to do to it. But it will provide us the indicator light. I've also chosen to put the laser on this side. And the laser is going to be directed to that side of the school. On this side of the school, we have the uh, optical receiver um, and as soon as I step out of the line of the laser the optical circuit will be completed and this will register and send the signal back to the multi-timer, high precision timer. Um, in order to start the timer I've set it up so that the uh, toggle switch that I've uh, installed in this, uh, this thing that looks remotely like a gun, uh, it's going to start the timer and it's also going to activate the visual indicator light. Uh, and then of course, as soon as I step out of the beam, the timer will register that I've completed the, the, the optical circuit and it will, it will stop timing. So that's uh, basically what the equipment looks like. Um, and um, the next section is uh, testing and then results. So, looking forward to doing this. Reset timer. Exposing laser. In your own time. Well, that was uh, quite interesting. Um, 
didn't perform as well as I was, I was hoping to, but in my defense, this is the very first time that I've tried this setup. And I hope with time um, uh, and, and a little bit of additional training, perhaps in a few months, I can redo this uh, experiment to see what kind, uh, if any, improvement I've made based on understanding um, the way that I need to move and uh, the, the, um, the experimental setup um, a, little bit, a little bit more. Um, so my figures are generally uh, just over uh, 0.4 seconds um, for uh, my response time. There is an outlier of 0.77, but I think that that's, uh, that, was, that was the first time that I, I, I did the experiment and I probably had a, quite a bit on my mind. So I needed to sort of calm down and get into the experiment before, um, or get into the conditions to improve my values. Um, so, taking my best value, I've decided not to use the average, but just to use the best value, just for, the, just, just for interest's sake. Uh, my best value is 0.4132 seconds uh, to respond. And uh, if, we plug that into, if we plug that into this graph, um, we, we, we roughly end up somewhere, somewhere uh, just, uh, just, just under the halfway mark. And uh, that gives us um, the, uh, the range at which I'd be able to uh, effectively dodge a 9mm bullet traveling at 350 meters per second. I'd be able to dodge that in, uh, within 145 meters. So I'd need to be 100, a minimum um, of 145 meters away, which is quite a big value. I believe with time, um, I can probably bring that down either close to 100 or break, break under 100. And that would become a, a lot more interesting. As I said, training is everything. And, and, and of course, having the right feedback from uh, measuring devices and equipment um, really assists in, in helping you to improve your performance. Of course, um, uh, what I'm depending on here to get these values is a visual response. Um, from a, a light flashing in my eyes. And um, that's part of the problem because uh, our, our visual processing is not actually that fast. In uh, traditional uh, Chinese martial arts, traditional wushu, um, uh, one of the concepts that we use a lot is to make tactile uh, contact with an opponent as quickly as possible in order to get a more effective and faster feedback loop going so that we can actually respond quicker to our opponent's changes in body posture that usually precede a series of attacks. Now that, that uh, feedback loop is very rapid and can happen in fractions of a second. Um, so it's not a question of grabbing on and holding on, it's just that light momentary contact gives us enough information to be able to react very quickly, far faster than we would be able to using visual cues. Um, and that, I believe, is one thing that we could uh, examine in, in later experiments, is to actually, instead of using a visual cue, which is a light flashing in my eyes, we could use a tactile cue, perhaps, uh, um, perhaps a vibrator from a, a mobile phone, or something like that, um, and see whether my response times are, are any better, and uh, either prove or disprove that theory. So uh, I'd be very interested in doing that. As I said, I would like to revisit this experiment after I've done a bit more training with it as well, and, uh, and see if I can't improve my values to the point where I break under 100 meters um, within which I'd be able to effectively dodge a bullet. Of course, this is really just an academic exercise, because as I said in the beginning of this video, I don't believe it's possible for a human being to dodge a, uh, a bullet, whether they're a martial artist or not. And uh, the reason that I believe that it's impossible is not because of response times, as I said, there always be a range within which you would be able to react. The problem is, once again, visual processing. Now, I've used a flashing light as a cue to tell me when the gun goes off. Most, most guns don't actually flash when, that, when they get fired. So you would really be depending on the sound of the gun firing in order to give you your cue. So you'd be using an audible signal. When we're talking about um, velocities of projectiles either just under or over the um, speed of sound uh, depending on a sound to um, respond is uh, uh, it's going to be too late so um, so that's uh, that's what one of the reasons I believe that it is impossible to dodge a bullet is that you don't you won't really get the necessary cue from the gun firing 
for you to actually act. The second reason I believe that it is impossible is once again to do with our visual processing. Because in order for, in order for you to effectively dodge a bullet, you have to see it. Now, if you've ever tried to look at a, at a rapidly spinning fan, you'll notice that, the, that the, um, it's actually quite difficult to see the veins. And the faster, or, or sorry, the, um, the blades, the faster the blades spin, the less you can see of them. And um, similarly with the, with the old TV sets, the old um, uh, 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 discharge tube um, TV screens, that, that image is, is rapidly being, uh, being um, flashed in front of you. Um, so in actual fact, it's not a continuous image. It's just being refreshed and flashed in front of you so rapidly that your visual processing doesn't pick up the fact that the, the image is actually flashing. Similarly with uh, fluorescent discharge tubes, they are actually flashing, but when you look at them continuously, you don't see that flash because your visual proce processing isn't fast enough to pick it up. If you move your eye rapidly when looking at a discharge lamp, you will see that the light, light is actually um, alternately switching on and off. But that's actually because you're moving your eye fast enough to leave a uh, leave an image in the back of your of your your your, your retina that it, it, it your your brain can can process later at its leisure. So it's a it's a little bit of a cheat. There's no way that you would be able to see a object of this size traveling at 350 meters per second against a variegated background. Your eyes and your visual processing is just not fast enough to pick it up. Perhaps if we were another species, maybe, uh, maybe a fruit fly, for instance, maybe they'd be able to um, process that image fast enough to be able to react to an oncoming bullet. I don't know. But for that reason, it, I believe that it is impossible to dodge a bullet. But an interesting thought experiment and uh, intellectual exercise in investigating it. Anyway, I enjoyed doing this experiment. I hope you enjoyed it too. And... Um, uh, leave your comments uh, below. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy to look at iterations of this experiment. One of the things that we could look at is um, whether a martial artist could actually um, interpose a shield quickly enough to actually block a bullet and what kind, of, what kind of response times that would entail. Because of course moving out of the path of an incoming projectile is, a, is perhaps a bigger and more costly movement than, than moving a shield in, in, in between a, a um, uh, yourself and an oncoming projectile. So let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed that and look forward to bringing you more content soon. This, is, uh, this has been uh, Lester Wushu Engineer. Um, we'll see you next time.